welcome to my series on making poppers. I've got uh, a number of poppers here to show you. Um, these are 8 inch poppers. They tend to weigh around 140 grams. This, uh, this big guy over here, he's a 9.5 inch popper. And he weighs uh, not quite 220 grams. Just to give you an eye of the uh, idea of the, the weight of these things. Here's one of the lures that's already fitted. And this, this single hook is a uh, BKK, Lone Diablo. And you can use anywhere from a 9 0 to a 11 0 on the back here. And for Giant Trevally, they often use uh, a very strong treble hook. And the treble hook in this case is a owner Stinger treble, four slash zero. So I thought I, I, would, uh, I would show you the, uh, how the, the hooks outfitted when they're actually cast. Now, some of the, some of the features of, of these lures is they have a uh, stainless steel wire that goes, uh, they call it a through wire. So this connection here is the same wire as connected here and this of course is connected to that wire that goes along inside here. So that's, uh, that's one of the features. Uh, this lure, these lures here all have a 20 millimeter um, eye and it's got little prisms in it so it's really really flashy. Now, all of these lures also have a carved gill. You can see it in red. I've highlighted them. This particular um, popper is got tuna colors, yellow and tuna colors. So you got the dark blue back and the yellow side. And there's an old uh, saying that everything in the ocean loves to eat a tuna. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that this one will be uh, a good color. So here. We've got uh, different colors. We've got a green. We've got a blue, and uh, this is this is uh, supermarine blue. It's a very very nice blue. I love that color. Also notice there's sparkle. I put always put sparkle on the tail. So when the lure is doing this and the sun is shining, it, it's like an avalanche going through a fire. It just uh, it just glitters, and sometimes you got to get. get get attention to get a bite. So this one is very similar in color to this one. It's got a dark back and of course sometimes the fish like dark, darker colors and sometimes they don't. Now these two are kind of a match set. Uh, this is pink. Pink is a very good color for Mahi Mahi and, and Wahoo and although this is not a Wahoo hook, uh, when you're on a long range fishing trip and you're trolling and somebody on the trolling team catches a a, a wahoo. What happens is there'll be a school of wahoo in the area and they get all excited and they, they come up to the top and in that case you could in fact snag or get one of them to bite on a surface lure if you make enough noise and get their attention. So that's what this one is. This of course is just a bigger version. So this is eight inch, this is nine and a half inch. One of, one of the joys of fishing poppers is, is uh, you get a lot of action when you get a bite. So the, the lure is on the surface and you're, you're splashing and making a glove and twist and turn and then something hits it. So if the fish comes up in the bottom, sometimes it'll hit the lure and come right out of the water. 100% and you know exactly what's, what's on your line because it's, it's clear and free of the water. Another time it'll come from the back and hit it. Very spectacular. Lots of fun. So I'm going to go right through the building of these from um, the computer work. Most of my videos start out with computer work. And uh, we're going to do the woodwork. And then we're going to uh, sand it and do all of the things that are necessary to make this a final product. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you, uh, I look at it now and I kind of laugh a little bit. Here are some of the first ones that I made. Look at the size of this monster. That's almost 12 inches. Um, I did this based on another video that I had seen. And um, they were for Giant Trevally lures. 
see the big face and the big my my goodness this must make a lot of a lot of noise with that all that area there that air and just gloop into the water um, the problem with these is they're they're quite heavy this one is 318 grams and I I couldn't cast this one with my equipment so um, it was fun to make it's a good place to start and when you when you when you're not sure what to do you got to start somewhere so that's exactly what this is this is starting somewhere and with my experience now that I've got, I've gone on two long range fishing trips. I know that these that you see here are much better for the, the fish that I'll be uh, use, targeting. And uh, so um, just right after this, I'm going to uh, put this guy in the water just to show you uh, how it sits in the water. Now, one of the things you would like it to do is have air in this pocket so when you pull it, you get that popping sound. That's where the, the air compresses and then finally becomes a pop and that's where you get a fair bit of the noise. So what you would like is this lure to sit kind of at an angle to the water or maybe even straight up and down and what that does, if the head is out of the water, it kind of tosses the water out of here so make sure that there's air there. So we'll have a look at how it sits in the water um, and, and kind of show you what we're looking for. Here, you are. here I am with my trusty bucket. I've got my lure. Now, there's no particular reason to drop it in gently because when, when you cast this thing, it's gonna come in and it's, good, it's gonna go down hard because it's gonna come from a height. So let's, I'm just gonna drop it randomly because when you cast it it'll come down randomly and let's see what happens. Okay so notice that it sits tail down. Also notice when I spin this around most of the water is out of the concave area in front. Now in salt water this lure will float 20% higher, but it, it won't necessarily go up. It'll probably go more like this. But what happens is, is when you, when, you, when you have your line attached here and you give it a pull, it's gonna to wanna to flip up and dig in, which is exactly what you want. So you might say, well, uh, this sinks too low. And no, no, actually this sinks just right. You can see it's at a bit of an angle there. Uh, you can you can change that angle by the size of the hook and the weight of the hook. Now, if I wanted, if if for instance it was doing this and I didn't like that, I could just put a bigger hook on it. So when I'm caulking a lure, I I always start out the same. I I put the lure on a on a white background or light background, and I take a picture and. Then I take this uh, picture and I crop it with Microsoft Paint just to get something a little bit more um, usable. Now, what I then do is I go into Microsoft Word and prior to that I have made a grid using insert shapes and it's got, it's got lines and it's got boxes and it's got letters and all that kind of stuff and I spend a long time on this grid making it right and of course what I do is I make absolutely sure that these grids are one inch apart so then I take my picture and I paste it into this word document and then you get boxes on the corner and you can you can size it and move it around a little bit it's a little bit clunky but uh, after you get the hang of it it's not too bad so the original lure that I was going to copy is 8 inches and of course if you put that on top there it matches absolutely perfectly but I thought for the purpose of this uh, this video I would also make a 7 inch and uh, that kind of illustrates how you can take this one picture and resize it linearly um, if you use the boxes in the corner in in Word uh, you can you can shape it to anything you want and it, it, it shapes it linearly um, 
height and, and width, and you get an exact reduced copy. If there's a box in the middle, if you use that, it distorts the whole thing, so don't use the middle one. So once I've got that, then I cut them out and make this. So once I've got the picture, I cut it out. I cut each one out. And of course this is just a, a flimsy piece of paper, so it, it's very, very hard to use this as a template. So what I then do is I make cardboard templates. The exact same size. So one of the things, a couple things you'll notice here, I squared these off because when you actually uh, do the work on a lathe, uh, the original blank will in fact be square. I'm going to have to grind these off manually and I'll show you how to do that. So I mark the belly loop, put a date on there, I say what it is, and of course marking the eye is quite important. Uh, you want that eye to be very carefully located because uh, if there's anything that looks a little bit odd, it's, it's a hook with kind of wonky eyes. So that, those eyes are, are, are very important. So uh, the next step, I'm going to go into the garage and I'm going to glue up some wood, make some blanks. They're all going to be the same size blanks. I'll just make a, a smaller lure um, on the same size blanks. And um, so we'll get into the garage here right away. And cut, up, cut up some wood. Now, just a reminder that we are in fact going to split these lures in half. Um, and there's a reason I, I will I do that. And I'll show you the reason here just in a, a, another short clip of a video. So here are two lures that I made a few years ago. And one of the things that you're faced with when you're, when you're putting a wire in a lure is how do you finish the tail part? So just, just a heads up, this one was split and this one wasn't. So just, just keep that in mind. So you, you make a loop on the end of your stainless steel on your, on your lure that's not split and you stick it through. So now you've got a piece of stainless steel sticking through here. But what do you do with it? Well, you've got to kind of make a loop and then take care of the tail of that loop. And I call this a wraparound. Now, first uh, 20 or 25 lures I made with this wraparound, um, it, was, it was based on uh, somebody that I had watched from, uh, from YouTube, uh, a really great lure maker from Somerset, England. And he made them like this. I went, oh, okay. So after I, I made these for a while, I really didn't like being able to see that wraparound. I thought that was kind of clunky. And I thought to myself, I wonder if there's a different way. Uh, one day on, a, on, a, on another video, I was watching a show and what happened is the, the fellow uh, had very lightly glued the two pieces together. So this is two pieces. And he had very lightly glued the two pieces together, did all of the sculpting, and was now getting ready to put in the uh, stainless steel. So what he did is he, he took a, an X-Acto knife and put it in the head and he managed to split the two pieces apart. So now you got two pieces. But what happens then is you can carve out room for this wraparound inside the lure. So this lure here has exactly the same wraparound as this does, only you can't see it. And I thought, wow, that's really cool. And um, so that's why I started uh, splitting my lures. Now, it turns out that this center loop, as well, is easier to install with the, uh, with the wooden blank split. Uh, you can still do it and make it very, very strong for uh, one that isn't split. 
but I think this one makes it even stronger. So when you're dealing with a large pelagic fish, wahoo particularly, you can't be too strong because they are just super aggressive fish and they twist and they turn and they'll, this, this is actually 330 seconds uh, stainless steel and uh, they will bend it. So that is why I split my wooden uh, lure and when I, it also allows, uh, if you want to add weight as in lead, you can carve out hollows inside symmetrically like, uh, on either side, put a, a lead hole, lead pour hole, and then after you get everything together and have it all glued, you, you pour in the lead. And uh, so there's a lot of good reasons to, to split it. One of the disadvantages of splitting it is you get a join on the top and on the bottom and uh, glue squeezes out of course when you when you when you clamp the two together and it takes a, a lot of extra work to sand that off so you you can't see that and in this lure I defy you to tell if this has ever been split but it does take a little bit of extra work and that's the price you pay for getting this wrap around inside the lure uh, and having a better attachment for your belly loop. So anyway, you'll you'll be seeing uh, more of this splitting as we uh, go down the path for these uh, uh, poppers. So this is uh, where the uh, artistic world kind of bumps into the real world. So this is the material that I have. This is from Home Depot. It's uh, select pine, no knots. I'll have a picture here for you in a while what happens if you have knots. So somehow you've got to get this turned into a blank of this. So this stuff if you measure it is exactly three quarters of an inch. So two pieces of this will be an inch and a half. So if you only want to use two pieces, i.e. the simple approach, your lure had better be less than an inch and a half. So the way to find that out, a couple different ways. You can take your template, measure the thickest part, which is usually down here. And this turns out to be 1.45 of an inch. So if I was to use two pieces of my select pine, I should be able to turn this uh, this lure on the lathe and have it turned out round. So what I did what I did then is I made it exactly uh, inch and a half measure this way, it's an inch and a half. So the blank will turn out to be square. So when I when I cut these pieces, and, and we're talking about the seven inch now, or, or remind you, what I did was I cut a slot in the middle. That's where your stainless steel is gonna run. But I did something else. I marked out where this lure will actually go if I was to cut it out with a bandsaw. Now, why would I do that? Well, this blank is going to be turning relatively fast on a lathe. You kind of want to glue this so it's not going to come apart. So this tells me I can glue here and here and use a normal amount of glue that you would use to, to put any two pieces of wood together. But now remember, I want to split this lure. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on both sides and a little bit of glue here on both sides. So after I separate this from the lathe and I'll make a cut here and I'll make a cut here and then I'll probably saw off the last little tiny bit. This, this piece will still be uh, glued together. So I'm just going to mark where the glue should be. 
and maybe just a little bit in the center. And when I mean a little bit, I mean a little bit. Now, in order to, once you've applied the glue, of course you put it together like a little sandwich, you gotta, you gotta clamp it. So, this is how I clamp it. So again, because there's more glue on the ends, you've got to have one clamp at each end. And of course, because you've got glue, a small amount of glue in the center, you've got to glue it in the center. So after, after about 45 minutes of being like this, you can take it apart. One thing though, when you are gluing it, you have to be very careful to align these slots, both, both ends. Now, if the wood is not quite right, or the slot is just a little bit off from one to the next, line up the slot, don't worry about the wood, because when you, when you take it on the lathe, you will in fact uh, round off these edges anyway, but it's really important to have that lined up properly so the stainless steel goes through. Now it's time to make the blank for the 8 inch popper. And of course life is not always so kind as to make things easy. So let's, let's find out why this isn't quite as easy. So again, you measure the widest part. And around here, you can use the picture or the, uh, the outline. And we find out it's 1.6 inches. Hmm. So we know that two of these put together is only 1.5 inches. Hmm. So I can't use two, I have to do something else. So what I did is I got onto my thickness planer and I have to add a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll add a wafer, two wafers, one on each side. And I want to come up with actually two inches here, so it's square. Now, the, the reason that I'm going to put these little thin wafers on the inside is as you're turning this, you're going to have very little of this guy left, of the thin one left. So when you're turning on a lathe, sometimes when you get that thin, you get tear out and you get, you get holes. So if you keep it in the center, that, that problem goes away. And when you're turning the lathe, you'll only be uh, cutting kind of the natural wood. So you can see that I've, uh, I've got the larger 8 inch lure put together. I'm hoping that the camera can see the, uh, the small piece that has been glued to the center. And like before, I mark the inside. That helps me identify where the glue goes. And I've already glued one of these together. And it looks kind of like this. Now, again, very important to get these to line up, these, these channels, both ends. And um, of course, here's the marks for our front and our back of the lure. And what I also did is I used that same template to mark the outside. Now, as this is spinning on the lathe, we're gonna be knocking these corners off and bringing this back. And it's just an indicator. It's um, the, the, the really the only way of copying these curves is you take a few test places and you cut to those test places and then you mark it with a pencil and then you go on either side of it. That's the only way. Very, very difficult to make a, a good copy. And that's of course why they have copy lathes for things like spindles and stuff. So the next time uh, you see this, it will be uh, on a lathe. I think we're gonna probably do a, a seven inch one. 
and we'll uh, we'll be making some dust and uh, a few chips. And with any luck, this thing won't come apart while we're on the lathe.